Welcome everybody to the Adelaide Biomed City um, webinar today, Adelaide Biomed City on Industry. And we have a very exciting talk today um, from Patrick Sitter on molecular imaging and therapy. Um, and the title is Molecular Imaging and Therapy Research Unit, a Nuclear Forge. So a very nice title, Patrick. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on Ghana land and acknowledge elders past and present and any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders who will be watching this or participating today. Again, I'd like to, um, to welcome Patrick and thank him very much for coming on board today to give us a uh, presentation on, on Mitru and all the things that it's doing. So thank you, Patrick. No worries. I understand that the, this series is usually about um, the research associated within um, our biomed city. But uh, I wanted to give a bit more of an introduction and overview of uh, what we do down here in the basement. And I wanted to introduce you to the Molecular Imaging and Therapy Research Unit. Mitru is the cyclotron facility in South Australia, operating from a purpose-built unit for the manufacture and distribution of radio pharmaceuticals. So the heart of the facility is the GE cyclotron, it's a tool that allows us to make uh, and prepare uh, radioisotopes. Um, so the cyclotron itself is a particle accelerator. It accelerates protons and other particles uh, to a velocity and energy able to overcome the strong nuclear force and transmute elements into um, different ones. Specifically, we aim to transmute them into radioisotopes, which have um, short half-lives and energetic emissions. We exploit this radioactivity for its clinical and research purposes uh, for imaging and therapeutic potential. So the gamma ray and positron emissions are predominantly used for um, their imaging properties and um, beta and alpha emissions uh, for their therapeutic applications. So we design the types of feedstock, so the, uh, the preliminary isotopes, um, and the ones that they will transmute into to um, produce the desired um, uh, uh, radiological decay that we will exploit for these purposes. Um, so the cyclotron we have here is able to bombard um, liquid, uh, solid and gas targets. And with our mainstay being the production of F18 uh, through bombardment of uh, O18 water. Uh, however, our largest um, opportunities are centered around our solid targetry and our beamline capabilities. This is one of the few um, uh, cyclotrons that has the capability for both solid targetry and um, uh, beamline in Australia. And we are currently some of the best producers of uh, radio isotopes uh, in that regard. Um, apart from the cyclotron and its vault that uh, it sits in, so it's located within a special specialized um, built vault. <coughs> and you can see that it holds about three meters of concrete to uh, allow it to uh, do its bombardment without um, uh, irradiating anybody in, in the facility. Uh, the facility itself uh, takes advantage of uh, purpose-built ability for regulatory compliance. So that's a very important part. So we don't just make radio uh, isotopes, we're also compliant um, to both uh, radiation handling um, regulations, which are domain of the EPA, uh, through our regular, uh, rigorous safety protocols and our purpose-built cells and fume hoods, um, but we also uh, uh, comply to pharmaceutical compliance um, through the TGA and through uh, the way that uh, the purpose-built facility is put together. So the, the flow of raw materials coming in and out and uh, the way that we dispatch our, uh, our materials, but also through um, uh, our purpose-built uh, clean rooms. So some of the um, important activities that we have to take into account is when um, activity is produced from the cyclotron, it can be transferred into uh, hot cells in the R&D laboratories for development of new uh, novel radio traces. 
and, and pharmaceuticals, but also it can be pumped into the clean rooms that we have set up in, in our facility for our commercial clients under the TGA compliant conditions. <clears throat> so TGA compliance is a tremendous undertaking, takes a lot of effort, um, but also provides some interesting opportunities. Um, <clears throat> the clean rooms allow us to manufacture sterile injectables uh, to conform to compliance guidance. Uh, and these radio pharmaceuticals can be distributed um, to clinical uh, customers and research partners within our state, within South Australia, but also throughout Australia. Um, and as of this presentation, Metro has supplied customers in all Australian states, therefore Tasmania, unfortunately. <clears throat> but that's, that's not really um, a, a shortcoming of us. It's, uh, it's just a breakdown of the logistical pathways that we were involved in he here in Australia. TGA compliance uh, results from the implementation of um, comprehensive pharmaceutical quality system, which outlines the procedures, documentations, specifications for the production of safe, efficacious, sterile products. Mitru currently holds a license for the sterile manufacture of um, a number of radio pharmaceuticals, including FDG, <coughs> sodium fluoride, fluoro PSMA 007, as well as non-sterile F18 and um, uh, copper 64. The majority of our staff here at Mitru currently are involved in the implementation of this um, quality system and the production of commercial F18 products. But we're in the middle of expanding ourselves and uh, in, in the middle of a recruitment drive. So uh, we're looking to expand our capabilities and opportunities. Um, uh, and uh, some of the ways that we want to expand our opportunities is by expanding our solid targetry capabilities, <clears throat> uh, increasing the production of uh, copper 64, as well as potentially looking at other um, uh, lucrative metals, including uh, copper 61 <clears throat> and even zirconium 89, uh, as well as increasing our uh, chemistry capabilities. Um, so we're looking to uh, increase the amount of molecules that we label with uh, F18. Uh, so um, uh, well, not only do we chelate the metals from our solid target tree, but also we uh, synthesize um, molecules that have a, a fluorine moiety. <clears throat> Uh, so our team in the past um, has uh, provided everything from small molecules, uh, peptides, proteins, and even antibodies uh, for research and clinical trials applications. <clears throat> As our expertise grows, um, uh, we look to expand our reach into more interesting um, research and development endeavors. Um, and I would like to invite um, the Biomed City um, community, but before I do, invite them into considering radio pharmaceuticals as something of uh, something they should uh, utilize in their research and their and their trials. We should have a little think about uh, why radio pharmaceuticals are advantageous. So, radio pharmaceuticals differ from other radiological imaging modalities, mainly in the concentrations of their chemistry. So unlike um, common uh, contrast agents, radio pharmaceuticals uh, are administered in such low concentrations and have high radioactive emissions and energy profiles that they do not interact with the body's uh, metabolism. They don't perturb it. Uh, so radio pharmaceuticals make very good candidates um, uh, and perfect radio traces for studying metabolic pathways and metabolism itself within the body. Uh, we already utilize it for a number of our products, including FDG, which is used for um, uh, studying where there is high glucose metabolism. <clears throat> Specifically, this is found within tumors and cancer cells, as well as uh, other products, things like uh, copper ATSM. So ATSM uh, would be uh, a molecule that would seek out 
uh, oxygen deprivation within the cancer cells. So uh, the solid tumors would be in interest of that. Um, F-DOPA is, uh, is something we're looking at. Um, so uh, interest in uh, Parkinson's disease and the, uh, the pathways involved uh, and any uh, sort of uh, interesting pathways there, um, as well as other clinical um, uh, and therapeutic agents that we're, we're involved in. So um, please, next time you are putting together a grant or research proposal, think of the nuclear option and um, think about us here at Mitru trying to produce radio pharmaceuticals. Um, so it wouldn't really be a presentation if we didn't discuss the shape of um, and the features included on uh, the building of SAMRI itself. And I believe uh, a lot of people say that it looks like a grate, like a cheese grater. To me, it looks like an anvil. An anvil to, uh, in a nuclear forge, shaping the way forward for nuclear medicine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick. And um, I um, the, will now open the session for um, questions. And um, maybe um, I did notice that Melanie was one of the participants, our new head of the clinical trial platform. So it might be of interest to Melanie, Patrick, if, if you um, could indicate some of the clinical trials that you're currently supplying um, products for. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure, uh, not sure how, uh, how much of a um, discretion we should use with our clinical trials, but we are involved in a few um, uh, copper trials with uh, Clarity, so there, uh, as well as um, some lutetium trials um, involving um, PSMA products and uh, other lutetium based uh, chelating agents. Um, so uh, Clarity uh, deal with um, chelating agents as well. Uh, important uh, ones are the, the sartates, uh, the biz PSMA, and there's, there's one more. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm involved with quality control down here in, in Mitri, so um, uh, I only have a, a little brief input with, uh, with the, uh, the clinical trials and, uh, and the research involved. I just wanted to show our capabilities down here as a facility and the opportunities available for other researchers within the uh, biomed um, space. Thank you, Patrick. Um, it's been great. Um, Austin Milton, who often does ask a question at these um, webinars, so thanks, Austin, for your participation, asked the question, thank you for the presentation, Patrick. It's good to see that my lead bricks are being put to good use, but shouldn't some be located lower down as well to protect the gonads? Cheers, Austin. Uh, they, they are certainly um, uh, they are certainly there in 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 the spaces when they when they're required. So uh, in the pictures that I've shown, um, uh, those would be uh, low activity uh, instances. So just when we're uh, using uh, almost um, uh, background levels, so very very low activities, um, or uh, in in the cases where we're dealing with uh, uh, beta emissions, where the emissions. Uh, uh, don't go so far, and uh, they can be blocked with much less than just a few bricks. So, yeah. <clears throat> and um, Patrick, um, you mentioned a number of compounds, lutetium, etc. So, yep, yep. Um, which leads me to the um, question about theranostics. Would you like to explain to the audience um, what theranostics is, and maybe? highlight um, whether you see that as, as some, an area that's going to grow in the future? Right, right. So theranostics is an important, um, uh, important space for nuclear medicine because uh, it's essentially a pairing um, between a, a diagnostic tool and a, 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 a therapeutic one. Um, a, a very well established theranostic pair is that of uh, gallium and lutetium. Um, so they would use a, a, a type of uh, chelating agent 
and um, uh, by using the gallium, you, you would chelate into the molecule and uh, it would be used um, to target a certain type of cancer. Um, and you'll be able to see that in the Im imagery. Um, and by changing it out for the therapeutic agent, the lutetium, you would be able to um, uh, attack that, um, uh, that tumor site. And then you could also uh, reuse uh, the gallium to be able to image uh, how well uh, the treatment is progressing. So, um, but there are novel uh, theranostic pairs that are coming through um, the supply chain and uh, through development. And those ones specifically are of the uh, copper, uh, copper variety. So uh, copper 64 and copper 61 are a, a, um, a, a theranostic pair that can be used. And uh, the brilliant idea behind those is that they uh, have the same chemistry, even though they have a completely different um, uh, physical uh, interaction uh, with the body and the tumor site, um, uh, they do not uh, interact chemically uh, any different. So um, uh, the, the advantage is in the radioisotope itself. Um, I hope that uh, answers that question. Uh, Steve? Yep, no, that was very good. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is, what are the challenges you face to bring a new tracer to re routine use for clinical research? Oh, okay. So that's, that's actually a, a long and arduous journey. Um, and to be able to go all the way to uh, commercial use, um, you must uh, get it through all three, four, or even five stages of clinical trials. Um, uh, and then um, go through the regulatory uh, hurdles to be able to um, uh, be uh, put through um, uh, through TGA compliance. So, um, but there, there are other ways to get things uh, to the patients. There are um, uh, uh, like uh, SAS alternatives and, and things like that. So there's, there's uh, special ways you can um, access uh, certain uh, radioisotopes and even other medications. So um, it, is, it is an arduous and long journey uh, to get something all the way from research uh, to development and then uh, through the clinical uh, trial stages and into um, uh, uh, just commercial manufacture and, and supply. Um, but uh, all, like we in the Metro area do have the expertise for doing such things. Um, and we're midway through uh, a bit of that uh, and we could facilitate uh, those types of projects in the future. Okay. All right. I can't see any more questions there. And I think that Patrick's given us a very good overview of all of the work that's done down in Mitru. Um, I also saw through the chat, the um, chatty um, put out an invitation for uh, Melanie, but I'm sure it applies to others. If they are interested to come and talk to the people at, uh, at Mitru, and certainly the Mitru staff would also be happy to show you around uh, for people who are interested in engaging in a research um, partnership or a clinical research partnership. So um, I think um, Samri should be very proud of the work that Mitru does. I'd particularly like to highlight that Mitru has continued to supply FDG um, to the Royal Adelaide, um, to Jones and Partners and to a number of other um, um, clients throughout COVID and uh, I, I think um, it would be safe to say that I don't think we've missed a day through the COVID period um, despite all the pressures of lockdowns and other aspects um, that uh, have caused a lot, us a lot of concern um, but, um, but Mitru has maintained that supply for cancer patients across the state. So I'd like to congratulate Mitru on uh, achieving that. The importance of, of Mitru is the only cyclotron in South Australia. The importance of that daily supply of, uh, of FDG for um, cancer patients and obviously their particip participation with, with agencies like Clarity um, and other research groups 
um, the Parkinson's Society and so on um, in, uh, in really helping patients uh, across the country. So thank you to Mitru and thank you, Patrick. And uh, I encourage everyone to join us again next week. Thank you.